In this video, we're going to take an introductory look at Pipeline Template Catalog on CloudBees CI. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. When you're getting ready to author a job, a lot of times you're probably going to go to a different job, make a copy of that job, and then start making changes for yourself. That's okay when you're getting started, but when you need to standardize across numerous jobs and have just one job and be able to make that change in one place and it apply to everywhere else, that's where pipeline template catalogs come into play. A pipeline template catalog gives you the ability to enforce consistency across your organization. Before we get started with pipeline template catalogs, let's take a look at the documentation. Let me show you how to get to it. So if you go to documentation, Cloud CI, and then under the documentation dropdown, select admin resources. And from there, go ahead and scroll down to pipelines, and then scroll down a little bit more and you will see pipeline templates. Okay, so this is where you can start to understand what pipeline template catalogs are and then how they can be used. In this video, we're only going to be covering the pipeline part of pipeline template catalogs. You can also manage multi-branch pipelines and do other things with pipeline template catalogs, but we're gonna cover that in a later video. Let's review the setup for today's demonstration. I have a client master set up here, or client controller. It has an agent attached to it, and also we're running 2.263.2.3 which at the time of the recording is the latest version. We have two users set up within this client controller. We have the one that I'm logged in now is admin, and I also have a user called user1. You'll see why as we go through this a little bit later. I also have RBAC turned on. The admin is the full administrator, and the user1 user is just a developer within the client controller. Also today for the sample, I have a sample application that we're gonna be using. This was generated off of start.spring.io and it's just a very simple Spring Boot application. If you were just to take a look at it, uh, main Java and I have a demo application. This is the only actual source code in this application. If you wanna do this yourself, Pick a project that you like and you can model what you do after what I'm going to show you today. Finally, I have an example pipeline template catalog repository that we're going to be using today. Now, the links for all of these items are going to be down below in the description. The one thing that you will notice here though, for pipeline template catalogs, I am working off of the no-k8s branch. This is the one that has the pipeline templates that we're gonna be using in today's demonstration. So what is a pipeline template catalog? A pipeline template catalog is a Git repository that has definitions for both the catalog, which we'll look at in a minute, and then the jobs that you want to define as templates. Now, pipeline template catalog is built off of the template engine that has been within CloudBees for a number of years. What makes pipeline template catalog different than the earlier template implementations is that we are able to externalize the template definitions into the Git repository. So to get started, we need to connect our client controller to our pipeline template catalog Git repository. This is actually very, very simple. On the left nav, we're going to click on pipeline template catalogs. We're going to click on add catalog. And then here we connect up to our repository. The branch or the tag for this template catalog in our case is going to be no-k8s. What will happen is on a, by default, daily basis, that repository will be re-scanned and any changes that are on that branch will be pulled into this client controller. For now, we're going to bump this down to 15 minutes. I'm also going to connect 
my client controller to the Git repository. Now, my Git repository is on GitHub. It is a public repository. So I could use GitHub, but instead I'm going to use Git. So the project repository, let me go grab that, is here and go back to there. And since it is public, I don't need to define any credentials. So just to review, I have a Git repository. I'm pointing it at a branch or a tag. Right now it's a branch. Maybe in real life, you're going to use a tag instead. And we've set it up to check for updates every 15 minutes. Let's click on save. And you'll see as it goes through, it's going to bring in that pipeline template catalog repository. It's going to scan, looking for all of the templates that are defined there. We actually have two there. We'll take a look at those in a moment. And then that's it. So now if we click on pipeline template catalogs in the breadcrumb, we'll see sample pipeline template catalog with the display name, the branch or tag, and it's showing that it's healthy. Let's click into this catalog. We can see that we have two templates defined. We have a Spring Boot Gradle Git and a Spring Boot Gradle Git multi-branch. Now again, in this video, we're only gonna be focusing on pipeline and not on multi-branch. Let's also click back into configure catalog. I wanna show you one thing here. Remember that we defined no K8S as our branch. Now what you'll see is that this currently maps to revision DC801. DC, DC8B01, that's what I meant to say. And if we go back over and take a look at our repository, you can see that the commit is DC8B01. So we know we're pointing at the same place in the repository that we're expecting to see. Now, since we're here, let's go ahead and spend a moment looking at what the definition of this pipeline template catalog is. When you review the documentation, you'll see that in order for this repository to work correctly with pipeline template catalog, you need to have a catalog YAML at the root, and then there is a templates folder that then has multiple folders in there. And within each of these folders, this you also have a template and a Jenkins file. So let's go back to catalog YAML and understand what that is. We have two attributes. And in fact, let me bump this up just a little bit more. We have two attributes. We have type pipeline template catalog and version one. So for any catalog YAMLs that you define, these two are the required values. We also have a name and a display name. These two values map back to name and display name. Now I'm using a slugified version for the name. You could do camel case, you could do whatever you want, you could do spaces, and then display name is more of the human friendly. Again, both of them are hum human friendly, but the display name is more descriptive. So that's catalog YAML. Catalog YAML must be in the root of your repository. Then under templates, we actually have two folders. We have Spring Boot Gradle Git multi-branch and then Spring Boot Gradle Git. This is the one we're gonna look at right now. We have a template YAML within this folder. And template YAML has a number of parameters. All of these can be referred to in the documentation. The first two that are critical are type of pipeline-template. And notice that's pipeline-template, not pipeline-template-catalog. So for the template, it's just pipeline template. And it also has a version of one. And here we have name and description. These happen to be defined with the same values. They don't have to be the same values, but you'll see where in a few minutes these will show up. 
And here we also have three parameters. We have a parameter for repo URL, which is a string. By default, if you do not define a type, the type is string. And we give it a display name of a repository URL. We also have branch name, display name of branch name, type of string, and also a default value of main. And then finally, we have a get credentials name, the display name of get credentials, but notice the type is of type credentials. And we'll see how this shows up in a few moments. Okay, so we're now back in our controller and let's figure out how to use our template. Now, one other thing here, and I'm going to actually zoom back out a little bit. If you'll notice on our controller, we now have this top level folder for our client master, client controller, pipeline template catalog, sample pipeline template catalog. If I click on that, then I can see both of the templates defined here. If I click into pipeline, since that's the one we're focusing on today, we can see that this template is being used, or this template is used in the following instances. And right now that is blank because we haven't created any jobs yet. That's what we're getting ready to do. Before we do that, I am going to create a folder here and I'm going to call this Team X. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to make it such that the only types of jobs that can be created in that folder are the Spring Boot Gradle Git Pipeline job types. So I created a new folder. I went to the bottom, selected Restrict the Kind of Children. I will go ahead and bump this back up. And then I selected Spring Boot Gradle Git Pipeline. Let's click on Save. Now, one more thing with this folder, I am going to set up my RBAC for this to where this is Team X Developers has the develop role. And this video isn't about RBAC in specific, but it is using the default typical initial setup developer role. I'm going to go ahead and add user one to this group. We'll have the develop role and we should be good to go. All right. So with that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out as admin. I'm going to log in as user one. So right now you can see that we have a very stripped down left nav. So I do not have administrative privileges on this controller. However, when I go into Team X, I click on New Spring Boot. So the only job type that I have is this. Let's type Test Pipeline. I select Spring Boot Gradle Get Pipeline. And you'll understand why here in just a moment. And then we have our three fields that we saw in our template YAML. We have repository URL. We have branch name defaulted to main. Then I have get credentials and it's just bringing in all of the credentials. Now, what's going to happen when we fill this out? In fact, let's go ahead and get it ready. I'm going to select the repository for my application. The default branch that, or the branch that I want to build is main. And since it is a public repository, you can go take a look at it for yourself. Even though there is a Git credential defined, it won't be used since it's a public repository. Let's click on save. But there's the question. The only thing that you've seen so far is the template. So going back to this job, instead of this being a normal pipeline configuration, 
the configuration is, oh, I have a repository URL, I have a branch, and some credentials, which are being ignored for this use case. So what does that mean? How, how does this know what to do? Well, that takes us back over to our template, and we take a look at Jenkins file. Now, this Jenkins file must be named Jenkins file. This is part of the opinionation. Much like you have to have catalog YAML, or specifically catalog.yaml, all lowercase in the root of the repository, and you must have a template.yaml within a templates slash some folder name, and it has to be all lowercase. You also have to have this Jenkins file setting right beside the template.yaml. Let's take a look at this template, excuse me, let's take a look at this Jenkins file and understand what we're doing here. This is just a standard. In this case, it's declarative. You could do scripted here as well, but for this example, we're sticking with declarative to keep it simple. So it's pipeline agent label Linux. The agent that I have connected to this controller has a label of Linux. We added in a few different options. One of the key ones here though is skip default checkout. And the reason why we're skipping that default checkout is because we are doing an explicit checkout. Why is that? Let's go back over to our job. Because I am specifying a repository URL, my job is pulling in a Jenkins file, but there's no code actually associated with the pipeline template catalog. It's just the definition of the job. So therefore, if I'm wanting to build an application from, in this case, the sample app for PTC repository, then I have to do an explicit checkout. So since I'm doing an explicit checkout, I wanted to skip the default checkout because by default, a checkout step is automatically added for any declarative pipeline. Now let's look at what's inside of this checkout. We see all three of our parameters. We see repo URL, we see get credentials, and then also the branch name. If you think about a pipeline job, you specify a branch name. So we're specifying, okay, from this repository, using these credentials, give me the contents of that branch. So then we'll have the code from the sample app repository. And then from there, we're just going to run dot slash Gradle W clean build. Our agent does not have Gradle installed on it. And since Gradle, as well as you can do it with Maven using Maven W, you can specify which version of the tool that you want to use. We're just going to let the build take care of its, of pulling down the version of Gradle it wants to use. So this is a very, very basic pipeline. So let's go ahead and click on save again, and then click on build now. And as it starts up, let's see what happens here. Starting up Gradle, again, pick your tool. Gradle, Maven, Yarn, doesn't matter. Whatever tool it is that you're wanting to use. So it checked out the code from our sample app. Actually, the fetch actually occurred up here. Then it used it from the main branch. It did all the builds and that was it. Again, this was a very basic build. And you may be thinking, well, that's not real exciting. Well, let's assume for a moment that we have, instead of just one job here, let's say we had 15, 20 jobs. Think microservice for just a moment. And let's also assume that every one of these jobs all use the exact same job type. 
which it would have to because the only jobs that can be created in this folder is of is this job type Spring Boot Gradle Git pipeline to be specific. Let's say we had 20 of these. Well, I would have to, if I was just using pipeline or if I was using a Jenkins file within my repository, that's the other thing to call out as well. If you notice here right now, there is no Jenkins file in my application at all. This is part of that centralization and standardization that the pipeline template catalog gives us. Just imagine a lot of things here. And let's say that we are wanting to add in a new security scanning step to our project. If I had separate pipeline jobs here, I would have to go into all the different jobs and add in that stage. Or if I had Jenkins files in the repositories, I would have to go and modify all of those Jenkins files. With Pipeline Template Catalog, it's as simple as going into our Jenkins file for the job that we want. We're gonna modify this. And I'm going to grab a little bit here. And we are going to add that. And we are going to add that. So I'm using an example of integrating with SNCC. I'm not using the SNCC plugin. I'm just using the SNCC CLI, which is installed on my agent. So I needed the token. So I'm offing against SNCC and then I'm running a test. And since I'm using Gradle, I can pass in a parameter that's Gradle specific, not required in my case, but I'm doing it just for completeness. So let's click commit. So now, our Jenkins file has an extra environment variable and we're going to do a security scan using SNCC. But remember, there's a key part here. And I'm still logged in as user one. Let me log out and go back in as admin. Remember that the catalog is set up to scan only once every 15 minutes. So if we were to take a look at the import log, you can see the last time that we scanned was at 1515. Now, depending on when I just click that save, that extra stage that I added may or may not be there. So just to make sure that everything is what I expect it to be, I'm going to go ahead and do a run catalog import now. So then at 1518, it scanned my multi-branch flavor and then my pipeline flavor. So now when I go back over to Team X, we still see test pipeline. That's all good. Let's log out and log back in as user one. And that's not really necessary, but I just want you to see that as an administrator, I locked it down to where jobs in this folder can only create this job type. And then we go through and run this job. Let's see what happens this time. Let's do a build now. If we take a look at the log, we're back to our Gradle clean build. Then we're offing against SNCC and we're doing our SNCC test against all sub projects. And this can take just a minute or two. There we go. And it did all the tests against my organization with this package manager and said, hey, I tested 59 dependencies for known issues, no known vulnerable paths found. And that just starts to scratch the surface of what you can do with pipeline template catalog. In future videos, we're going to be going through how to use multi-branch within Pipeline Template Catalog, as well as how to bulk manage your Pipeline Template Catalogs.
If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs, or you can reach out directly to me on Twitter at Darren Pope. If you found this video helpful, could you take a minute, go ahead and subscribe, and then ring that bell so you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you in the next video.